How's it going, everybody? I'm really excited to introduce Matt Garvey, head coach of Montgomery Bell Academy, one of the subscribers in the coaches training program. And I'm really excited to interview you here, Matt, today and talk a little bit about your program um, and how you utilize the coaches training program to help you. Yeah, excited to be here, Jamie. Thanks for having us. And we've really enjoyed the coaches training program the two uh, past two years that we've been a part of it. Awesome. Yeah, you were in the uh, the inaugural class of people when I first started doing this. What 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 made you um, uh, give it a shot? Well, I think that uh, you know our, our history with you, Jamie. Our history with uh, with what you'd, you've been doing. We we attended a three D lacrosse coaches summit a couple of years ago in Las Vegas that you put on, that and fun. loved the content and um, not just the content when we were there, but then also all the videos that you. Um, you know, you uploaded everything. So it let us go back and look at the seminars that we were either in and slow it down or the seminars that we missed. And so that was, we, we knew that we were going to get a good product um, by, uh, by using your, whatever you were doing. Cool, man. And so um, this year, you know, I know that you came on uh, office hours really early on and you were working on your, your pairs offense. And uh, you had mentioned that the uh, Steve Brundage pairs offense talk was helpful. Yeah, exactly. We uh, we knew that we were going to have a little bit uh, new look offense in 2019. This past season, we graduated a, a bunch of a bunch of guys um, that you know went on to play college lacrosse, and, and we had a young group coming in. Um, but we were also blessed with uh, more lefty offensive players than, than right-handed offensive players. So we thought that this um, was a great time to kind of start implementing what we'd wanted to do the last couple of years, but hadn't been able to do. Um, so implementing this, this pairs look. And I think I'll put a disclaimer out there for, for anyone listening um, who's a true pairs advocate and stuff like that. I think the clips you'll see and the things I talk about, it's not a truly traditional pairs offense, but we try to, you know, try to work with what we have and, and, and do um, the, the best we can with it and, and kind of tailor it to our players. What was it about Brundy's talk that kind of opened your eyes to some, some key concepts that you were able to uh, leverage? Well, I think the first thing, um, our offensive coordinator um, is a former box player, played for the Bandits, and um, so, so he, he felt comfortable teaching that. Um, and so the, I think the first thing that kind of stuck out of, about that is in the first you know, 10 minutes of his – his talk is the numbering system, the way he numbers the positions on the field. And so we thought that that would be an easy explanation for, for, our, uh, for our boys, for our players. And then um, as, we, as it evolved throughout the season, it was really cool to say, hey, you know, you've got the, you've got the matchup, take your guy to the four, you've got your, you know, that's a bad matchup for us, go to the six. Um, and so we could kind of put him in positions without saying, hey, start your dodge, from you know top right alley start your dodge from x but the numbering system really helped us and the boys bought into to learning the numbering system and i think the, then the next step um is the getting the boys comfortable on playing their natural you know their natural side of the field with their, their sticks facing in into the goal um which, which you know like i said without our boys buying into this um we wouldn't have had the success that we had and so um, those two things. And then the way that um, the talk built, you know, it wasn't just like, I'm going to show you six on six clips and this is all we're going to talk about, but no, here's some shooting drills we did to um, get our, the player, you know, Brundage's players comfortable with it. And, and we were able to do that. And so I think, you know, for our off season, the way we built our off season starting, you know, in the fall when we had the, um, the players who were working out with us in the fall is all shooting drills from their natural side, the two, two man game, shooting drills so that by the time we got into preseason in January and February, we were able to start doing, you know, four on four. And then when we did six on six, it was, it felt more natural for the boys to just jump into that. They kind of knew where they were on the field. Yeah. And, and uh, for those people that are listening here that don't know, Steve Brundage is the assistant at Marquette and he, along with Chris Bates, uh, who was the head coach at Princeton when Brundy was the offensive coordinator, those guys, um, work together um, on the pairs offense. And, and really Chris Bates was kind of the pioneer of the pairs offense. And, and Steve Brundage was right there in the driver's seat or the passenger seat on that one, learning it. And 
and really built it up at Marquette, which is one of the reasons why Marquette got so good uh, so quickly. Um, now, you sent me a couple of clips, um, Matt. I'm going to pop them up, and, um, and let's take a look at uh, what we got here. This is our first clip. This is actually our first game. Um, and so it, it's funny. If you stop it right here, uh, I, I, coaching high school boys, and I think that a lot of people can say the same thing. Jamie, I know you're a high, sc you're a high school coach, but the, the first time you run a new concept or a new play or anything, um, if it goes well, you, it seems like you get a lot more buy-in from <laughs> the players. Yeah. That, that they're like, oh, yeah, we want to do this every time now. And so with our pairs offense, you know, we put it in with a, you know, I said we had lefties, but this first game we were able to get over the top um, a lot. And so that really, so we kind of fell in love with our guys dodging over the top. And we have that fade guy right there. And this is one of our first goals. And you see just um, the team we were playing, they weren't ready to kind of, they slid it adjacent right to his face. And we had a, a good strong lefty who really just, Bear down, um, made the guy slide, and then a good, a good fade and a good shot. Um, so right there. So that was our first game. This is our first game of the season. If you see um, 22 right there, he's the pair with uh, six who makes the pass. And I think oh, so our, off -ball, yeah. our off ball work isn't great on this just because it's our, our first game. So we're kind of getting clogged up a little bit in the middle when we should be having a guy sitting at the back pipe. But uh, – but it worked, and we were able to um, to tweak it as we went forward. So here's that's our, the first look I want to show you is just getting over the top um, with our lefty bearing down and then fading with our righty for a goal. Yeah, and this fade is so important, and it's really you know at the at the Division One level and the pro level you see it all the time, um, and at the high school level there's times when you know you just don't see it, but it puts this guy in a really tough spot. They don't know who to slide from. If they slide off this guy, obviously the lefty's open. And if they slide off like they did, they show up, you know, just showing off this fade, you know, is enough to create a great scoring chance. So that's yeah, right. If you stop it right here, go back just to, just uh, just as soon as he catches that right here, you create a two on one um, with the low guy too. And so um, even though we didn't, you know, our spacing's a little funky here, it still creates two on ones all over the field. And if, yeah, you know, I think that we knew we had some um, players with high IQ and, and um, we were able to run this because, it, you know, it's just a, a unselfishness, you know, pass to the, the guy who's open. And I, I told you earlier, but, you know, at the end of the season, we looked through our stats and we were getting assists on about 70% of our goals scored, which is, uh, which is pretty huge for us, um, you know, and something that we, that we really stressed a lot of moving the ball. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this clip right here. So if you stop it right here, I'll give you a little background. So this is uh, later in the season, uh, about midway through the season. We're in league play now, so we're playing opponents who really know us. And so we get over the top of the same player, but now they know they don't want to slide off that adjacent guy going forward. They're going to slide um, off the uh, the far adjacent guy, really. And we have the IQ to throw it back to where they slid from, and we stick that goal. Um, it's a really good shot too, right off right off hip. Um, but it's the same guy, same same passer, number six. But he makes that pass um, back because they're not they're not um, they're not sliding off the adjacent fade guy. Yeah, they're sliding basically off the mirror. Um, or off what on the last clip was kind of like the uh, clear field. And so that's the thing we love. Like like about. Again, it would be the, the equivalent of sliding off of 22. Exactly. And you see 22 is ready here. He's got a stick up ready for yeah. a shot. So, yeah, really um, great read on the part of everybody. And then the backside action, you got a fade in, a, in an inside guy. Is that, is that what you got yeah. out of the backside? Yeah, exactly, guy? yeah. So we're clearing um, – there's really two things you can do with that is you can clear through um, that top guy or you can fade with them. And we just decided it, we were getting some good looks by just fading him um, and not clearing him through. That's the beauty of having a lot of lefties, so Matt. It's, it's nice. I, I know that we, uh, 
that, that we certainly enjoy it. So you see, see here, so this is our last, one of our last regular season games against a, a good opponent um, who scouted us well. Well, they, they knew they weren't going to let us get over the top. And so what we did going into the game is saying that, well, that if we're not going to get over the top, you can stop it right there, Jamie. Um, we're going to have our lefties do the traditional alley dodges. Mm -hmm. and, th and this, I actually, you had given us this idea from office hours is that you can do these traditional alley dodges but still play the pairs. And you see if eight, eight's his pair, who's a righty. And so he's just mirroring him a little bit. And so once the slide happens, he, he pops and we get that shot right there. And, and since he's a righty, his stick is still inside the pipes there, which is, you know, we think increases the likelihood of scoring a goal by, by a lot. Yeah, and this guy does a really nice job with a little finalizer on the wing. And one of the things that you do so well here is you take the ball almost down to the goal line. And that opens up spacing for these, you know, pops, these follows, whatever, whips, a lot of different terminologies for saying the same thing. Um, but man, like when you get that ball low like that, it is, uh, it's devastating from a spacing perspective. Yeah. And it's, it's great, you know, having the lefties, it's great having, having guys, uh, with high IQ, but it's also great to have guys who can, who can shoot the ball. I think listening to one of your earlier podcasts that you did with, uh, coach Berkman out Salisbury, he said he works on shooting and clearing It'll be to start practice every day. Um, and that, and we kind of follow that mold of we shoot you know, every day, if we're not shooting for, for 15 or 20 minutes every day, then, then we feel like we, we haven't done um, a good job at practice. And so we build that in every day. And it's, you know, <clears throat> I can't stress enough how important it is that when you're doing shooting drills, that you mimic your offense, you mimic what you want in your offense. It's like, you know, it, it's the boys love, you know, just the pass across step down shooting. And just so they can, you know, let it rip and stuff like that. But is that really what you're getting? A pass across and 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 step down shots? Not always. And so what what we try to do every day, and our coaching staff does a great job of of doing, you know, shooting drills that we're going to see looks that we're going to see in games. Really cool stuff. Um, what about um, what's how do you use the coaches training program differently in season versus out of season? Yeah, so this is something we talked about, you know, I, I uh, when, when we're in season, you know, starting really in March when we start our games um, through mid-May, we, I use the coaching training program for the office hours, you know, you do the weekly office hours and you kind of rotate times, but those are, those are been great times for us to submit uh, clips, game or practice clips to you um, and have you break them down. I know this year we did an early season practice clip of our pairs offense and you had some some ideas on um well if you don't have enough lefties you don't have enough righties you can still do those traditional alley dodges with the stick to the outside and still run the pairs look and so that kind of opened our eyes to some different things we could do with that um, and then out of season is really you know summer and fall is really the time where our coaches dig into it and um you know that's when we have have the most time to, to, to really dig into the coaches training program. And, and that's where we get a lot of our good stuff. And, you know, we get drills with you and we have, um, we have some boys who, who aren't playing fall sports who work out with us in the fall and we kind of experiment with them with yeah. things that we, we, uh, we draw from your, from your coaches training program. We're like, you know, no harm, no foul. We're just going to experiment with these things yeah. in the, uh, in the, in the fall. And they always, you know, the experiments are always successful. It's such a blast when you can turn, you know, turn your practice into a laboratory, isn't it? it yeah, it's awesome. And it's, and it's sometimes you have to like recondition the players that are used to, you know, coming, they're coming off the summer ball or they're coming up, up from, you know, the youth programs or things like that. And you're like, well, no, let's just, let's just try this. Let's use tennis balls. Let's, you know, um, do, you know, play on three by three goals and, and things like that. And so, um, once you get the, the player buy-in, you know, you have the coach buy-in, but once you get the player buy-in, things can really take off. One of my biggest passions about the sport, you know, I love it all, but I love, there's something about developing individual players and really like looking at skills and breaking them down and trying to figure out, you know, can you really take a 
take an average athlete and make them a great dodger. And one of my favorite techniques has to do with like double threat dodges and slide dodges. Did you guys get a chance to dive into that one at all? Or is that something maybe you'll do this summer? That's something that we're going to, we're going to really look at this summer that especially the concept of the double threat, you know, we, we, we teach our boys that, but um, so often we get comfortable as players growing up and then as coaches and letting it, letting it go is the one handed, you know, the one handed dodges and stuff like that. And, you know, working with some of our youth players the other day at a club practice, you know, I was explaining how, how difficult it is to come out of a roll dodge when you're roll, roll dodge one handed to score, to shoot, to pass. And so um, coming out of that roll dodge with your bottom hand still on the stick and, and being and coming out of that roll dodge into a triple threat position. No doubt. You know, one of the really interesting things I'm diving into right now I had a, is, is post-up moves and learning how to post up. And I was talking, I had lunch with Matt Brown, uh, associate head coach and offensive coordinator at Denver about uh, a month ago, maybe six weeks ago or so. And um, he was coming to a similar conclusion that I am right now about this importance of this. And he was like, Jamie, I just need to get my guys to literally stop, stop their feet, stop running. It's so counterintuitive, actually, because you think about, like, getting separation. But he's like, listen, we're just – you know, we, we've got good players, but we're not – we're just not going to, like, blow by these, you know, shorties at the University of Maryland. But we can get by them. And the way we're going to get by them is this idea of the midfield post-up, um, where you get up and, you know, you, you're going to get doubled sometimes if you try to post up and turn your back at five and five. But if you get up to 12 and seven, you know, up, up like, you know, up kind of like where your pairs action is occurring on a sweep – and you sit there for a second and you can have your head up knowing where sliders are not going to, they're not going to jump on a double team quite as quickly. And there's some really, really cool. And I would say semi uncharted territory as it comes to midfield post-ups. Um, and uh, so I look forward to, um, I'm, I'm working a lot on that right now up here in Canada where I am. Um, I'm, albeit I'm, I'm, I'm coaching girls, but it's the same thing. The sports are pretty similar. So I'll, uh, I'll be sure to share that with you as we go. As you go forward. Yeah, I think that's, that's great. And, like, you know, another thing about the post-up is that you, the defender's feet stop moving, too. Right. You, know, exactly. you, you post them up, and the defender's feet stop moving. And then you can do a, so many things. Uh, one of, you know, our, our uh, All-American attackman this year, so we, he's returning, which is really nice. But right. he, he does so well is he gets to five and five or even higher than five and five, and he takes that step back. Mm -hmm. takes that, it's like a he hesitation step back, and now the defender's left with, do I just sit? You know, I should just sit on it, but my all my instinct is telling me to take that step out to him, right? And that's when he's he's been so lethal, but just you know, getting underneath guys or getting over top guys and that change of direction, change of speed, and also just being deception deceptive. I think that's something that you really stress in, in a lot of your teachings is being deceptive. Cool, man. Well, Matt, I, I really appreciate you taking the time to send me some clips. I'm thrilled that you uh, have enjoyed this program so far. I will keep working my butt off to get more great content. I got some great ideas. And uh, have an awesome summer, and uh, let's be in touch. Thanks, Jamie. You too. All right, man. Have a good one, buddy. Good. Thanks.